Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. As you can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Shokin Chauhan, someone who keeps his finger on the pulse, especially on the Northeast, mm-hmm. Nepal, Bhutan, and of course, the topic for the day, Myanmar. Sir, good afternoon and welcome to one of my first live sessions in the afternoon, as a matter of fact. So, thank you so much for uh, joining in, sir. Good afternoon, Nadi. Thank you so much for calling me. It's an, indeed a great honor to be a part of your show. As always, have I always enjoyed the wonderful questions that you always set for me. It's always a it, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for the compliment, sir. So let's just deep dive into it. Myanmar has been into um, you know the rule of the junta for for a while now. February twenty twenty one or twenty 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 one. This whole thing started up and uh, Myanmar has been a country which has been in turmoil for a while since its, you know, history. Uh, They've been coups and they've been this and that and the other. But let's just, you know, put a base to it. How do you see the situation in Myanmar uh, at the moment, sir? You know, what's what's happening? Generally speaking, we'll get into the China angle, the Chin army, the Arakan army, the India angle and everything like that. But just tell us. As per your view, what is the country looking at? As you said, Adi, the the, the Myanmar has been under military rule for most of its uh, most of its independent era, most of its time. Uh, if it was not the present uh, government, it was the previous military uh, officers, and of course, started with Nevin. Uh, who was also a military officer. The issue about Myanmar is that uh, it is located at the crossroads of uh, uh, two very large civilizations, the Chinese civilization and the Indian civilization. And it's also the crossroads uh, to the southeast uh, of Asia. If you were to go through from India's northeast, uh, Myanmar is only is the only land bridge to Southeast Asia. It's also filled with different different tribes, different cultures, different uh, requirements, different uh, issues, and each of these tribes has has a different goal, different aim. Uh, much of Myanmar, the military does not control. And because of that, uh, there are large areas, especially between uh, Ruli in Yangon, but in China, uh, as, as, as you draw the line from there downwards to India's northeast, there are large areas with the Yangon army or the uh, Tatmadaw, as it is called, the Myanmar army is called, uh, is, is, does not control those areas. So much of that area that they have uh, actually hived out uh, so that it can, uh, you know, they, they can be some modicum of peace, hived out to those terrorists or insurgent groups who control the, the, the access to the economic trade, who control the access to illegal trade, uh, who control the access to drugs, narcotics, and as a result of which, because uh, we don't have a fence between uh, the Indian Northeast and uh, Myanmar, uh, we have a very major smuggling problem, a very major crime problem, a very major uh, insurgent problem, much because of the unmanageable areas of the of Myanmar, the condition in which it is now, uh, well, they control Rangoon, they control Napido, they might control another here, another hundred kilometers or uh, maybe two hundred kilometers of his, if you take a circle between Napido and the rest of Myanmar. Uh, but the rest of Myanmar, especially uh, its north, the east, the south, is largely uncontrolled, Adi. So, uh, 
because they control the the access to information uh mm. it it really seems as if there is no solution here they they uh, as you are aware ong sang suu kyi is uh, in prison mm. as also all the uh, all the major opposition party people they're all in prison but that doesn't mean that there isn't a nascent uh, opposition to them mm-hmm. uh, which is there there is a large refugee population in uh, mizoram uh, of myanmaris of the same tribe the chin tribe uh, and and it's a country in 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 great need for you know it's crying out for help it's a country which is largely lawless so it's difficult to really describe what myanmar is like i think you you put in a very very interesting uh, baseline to the conversation so i wanted to actually get into uh, the perception and you you kind of hinted towards that that they don't they're not even in control of the entire country so since the information is controlled by them we only hear what they want us to hear and yeah. uh, the popular belief is that uh, china has uh, deep entangled into myanmar and they've got a lot of support going in for the junta uh you hear that in popular narrative but you also hear that the myanmaris were supposed to have this conference in mar uh, in the end of uh, february which is that mekong uh, there's this uh, i keep mess- messing up the name so i won't even try it so it's a delta sort of a development cooperation Mm-hmm. where the 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 chinese prime minister was supposed to come in uh mm-hmm. li keqiang was supposed to come in and he didn't even respond to them so how do you see both of these things uh <clears throat> looking at the factor uh, being a devil's advocate myself that the chinese themselves had um uh you know brought in and were participating with the leader of the janta right at the beginning of the coup as well so there there two different uh, games here how do you place the chinese influence within myanmar sir you know this chinese angle is something that a lot of people have spoken about uh, adi it's been spoken about for the last uh, at least two decades uh, china has done a lot of uh, work in myanmar in improving their infrastructure uh, penetrating many of the tribes uh being a very large mar- gray market for uh, the arms that many of these tribal armies like the chin national army mm-hmm. or the or the other armies uh they get much of their arms from the ruli gray market in china in in uh, the 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 yunnan province which is the gateway ruli is the gateway to uh, to to myanmar and it is absolutely on the border but what is the influence uh, is, is a difficult issue because I, let me tell you uh, when i had visited uh, myanmar in 2017 as a part of the national level meeting uh i was called out separately by the myanmar home minister and told in no separate no in, in as clear words as the fact is that we don't trust china and we know that you don't trust them either so uh, whether he was he was passing a message to me there's no doubt about it he was using me because as a military officer to pass this message across to my government which i did but importantly are the the fact that he was willing to speak to me and telling me that we don't trust china and i know you don't trust them either so we have a common enemy is is a thing that uh, you know we need to be very clear about that they don't trust the chinese the chinese may be having money they may be doing things for them they may be improving their agri- uh, their infrastructure but they don't trust them they may have inroads into uh, the 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 you know the, the political mm. decision making bodies but the myanmar army the tatmadaw which controls uh, myanmar 
uh, I am absolutely clear because I've spoken with many, many, many people. The the younger Myanmarese who used to visit our country when we used to take them to Gaya. Uh, we had many talks with the Myanmar army at various levels, uh, at the post level, at the sector level. Uh, we've spoken to Myanmar's uh, politicians. I was a part of the talks uh, in 2019 uh, at Imphal, when we talked about improving our relationship and improving the, the border infrastructure. At every point, I was clear that they, they did not trust the Chinese. So well, whatever people may so, say, uh, I'm quite certain that they don't trust the market. Interesting. Uh, so <clears throat> the sheer factor, you know, some time ago there was this uh, controversy, if I may, and in, in India, funnily speaking, everything becomes a controversy. <laughs> Uh, leaving that aside, uh, th these bombs that that allegedly fell into Indian territory. Now I don't know if it did or not. I don't want to debate Thank that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it fell into a river, and that's something which is the border between the two countries, and that's probably what was the official narrative. And I'd like to stick with that. Keeping that aside, I mean that's a that's a mistake or whatever it is. The sheer factor that the janta needs to use air power tells us something uh, that the uh, the opposition of the, uh, you know, against the Janta has a certain strength. And if they're using their MIGs and stuff like that, you know, there's something to it. Uh, my question is that, who do you think is supporting this opposition? Because there are only two, three parties around the place. There's one China, which you kind of explained. There's one us, uh, which we've not dwelled into. There's, of course, Thailand and, you know, all these guys on the other side of it. Who do you think is supporting the opposition? There is, there is a group called the People's Defense Force coming up, which is the National Unity uh, Front, and the Chin Army, and so on and so forth. Where do you, you know, how do you see the struggle going forward, sir? Adi, I told, I spoke about this a little earlier. Uh, much of what you hear is what is not right. Uh, they said that they had bombed, like, uh, Camp Victoria, that is where Maxim, one of these refugees are in Mizoram. Uh, what is on ground? Why did they use air power? Is this opposition going to create a problem for the Myanmar army? Is it going to create a problem for the government in power? Uh, at the present moment, Adi, I don't see any kind of problem in, for the government in power, not militarily at least. Politically, they'll never win an election because they're not popular at all. But mi militarily, whether they can be overthrown is a, is an absolutely different matter. So tomorrow, if the Tatmada was to cat was to announce the elections, uh, they will not win. <laughs> but uh, but militarily, can they be overthrown? Mm, very difficult because. To be overthrown, you have to get all these tribal national armies together. They have to be operating in one single thought process with a single aim, uh, which is not likely. So why is the Myanmar army targeting South uh, Mizoram? Uh, South Mizoram is infested, uh, or South Mi south of South Mizoram, that is South of Parva. Parva is the last town that we have in Mizoram. South of Parva uh, is the, the ALA or the Arakan Liberation Army or the AA, the Arakan Army. They're two separate okay. armies. Sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't get along. <laughs> okay. So in the Arakan Liberation Army and the Arakan Army, uh, the Tatmada is often used force. Not just now, they've been using force earlier. Uh, if you were to, if you were to just, you know, if you were to know what the kind of unit there are of the Myanmar army along the 1776 kilometer long border that we share with Myanmar, you'd be surprised that there are actually only four units of about 1,200 people each. So along 1776 kilometers, there are just four units. 
and maybe another four in reserve. So each unit could be controlling up to more than 200 to 300 kilometers of a very difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. If you were to cater for reserves and if you were looking at different kinds of deployments and things like that. So when you take these numerical issues in mind, you're aware that the, the, these guys actually control nothing. But every once in a while, they make an attempt to come and hit a stack camp. Uh, they feel the camps are in uh, South Mizoram. We have often told them that the camps are actually south of South Mizoram. And they have been one or two points at which uh, when the Arakan Army, uh, the, uh, the Arakan Liberation Army had uh, infiltrated into India, we have caught them hand and handed them over to the Myanmar government. Just as we expect that they will break up uh, the insurgent camps that are in uh, their, their territory and hand over the insurgents to us. So it's a quid pro quo, Adi. There are 55 camps of our insurgent groups in Myanmar, which we want close because from those camps, they, 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 they are a threat to, uh, to, to life in the north, northeastern state, especially South, uh, South Arunachal, uh, Nagaland, Manipur, and Mizoram. These are the four states that are uh, that have a direct border with uh, with, uh, with with Myanmar, and in all these four states, there is no. We, you know, you're aware we don't have a fence. You're aware that we can't build a fence because uh, of the population on both sides, which is similar. So, with both these issues, you have to keep in mind that uh, every once in a while, the Myanmar army might do something, but <coughs> they don't have this area under control. So you spoke about the Arakan Army and the Arakan National Army. Of course, there is a the I I still remember this. You know, uh, you you had spoken about the Northeast uh, in our probably our first interaction, and you said yeah, you know, yeah. Adi, these guys have a army per village, so there'll be three guys with a pitchfork, and he'll call himself Absolutely. an army. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know. Keeping that into consideration, <laughs> yeah. Arakan region has been fighting for its so-called independence, separation, autonomy. Uh, from which angle you look at it, it's it, it suits you. My my point is that they've been fighting with the central forces and the central powers in um, um, in in Myanmar. A lot of people say that the Arakan army is being supported by China. A lot of people say the Arakan you know movement has been supported by India. What is this whole thing all about, sir? Exactly what you said. There is the Arakan Liberation Army. There is the Arakan Army. There is the Chin National Army. Uh, there, there are the Rohingyas. They have that army. And there are a whole lot of other armies. But uh, these are the ones that we are bothered about because they border our, our, yeah. our, the, 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 the states opposite them. But the whole region is a conglomeration of different tribes, as I said. Different tribal cultures, different tribal interests, and those interests are paramount to these tribes. I remember meeting uh, the, 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 the chief minister of uh, Mizoram a couple of years back when I was the director general, and we were talking about uh, the Chin National Army and uh, how to get rid of them. But what the Mizoram chief minister told me and I'm certain that Mr. Lalthan Haula, who is the present chief minister, also echoed the same words when he said that General Chauhan, uh, you'd be surprised that 70% uh, of Mizoram has uh, their, you know, their ancestry from uh, this part of uh, of, uh, of Myanmar, oh. and the tribes opposite them are the Chin tribes. And the chains are very powerful, are a very powerful tribe in Myanmar itself. Yeah. And they are in opposition to uh, the Tatmada or the, uh, the military government in Myanmar. So why is, uh, we are not able to do anything. To it. And they said that uh, you can't, you can't tell us to stop our brothers and sisters from crossing the border and coming home. Uh, we will not allow that. So. 
Adi, when you when you study the Northeast, you have to study and you have to accept a lot of differences in culture, a lot of differences in interests, and uh, accept that these differences will remain in a rainbow nation like us. That's so, absolutely yeah. true. I think, yeah. uh, and and that is why we must we must accept certain issues. We must. Uh, deal with the Myanmar army regardless of anything else and tell them, look, we our national interests are, we don't want to create problem, problems for you. We don't want you to create problems for us. We want to live amicably. We want to have trade. We want to use your, your, uh, your land as a lifeline or as a trade route to reach the southeastern nations. We want you to stop the Chinese from using your territory to bother us. Uh, and we will try our best, but our problems are our tribes are uh, our tribes live in the areas of the borders, and the tribes uh, have their own interests, and we must accept that just like your tribes have their interests, our tribes have their interests, and we'll have to deal with this particular issue in the best way we can. Indeed, sir. There can Indeed. be no there can be no uh, military solution to this army at all. Uh, yeah, there is, is no way that you can force yes. these around. Yeah, you cannot force Mizoram to stop the chains from coming in. You cannot force Mizoram to accept certain issues because they were uh, the chain tribe first and much later uh, the, the state of Mizoram. So, and, so. and we have fought them. You're aware, 1986, we had our accord, the Mizo Accord. And since then, Mizoram has been thankfully peaceful. We don't want to go back to another start of a problem. So there is Indeed. much that we have to accept, Adi, uh, when you are dealing with the with the, the 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 states, northeastern states, bordering uh, Myanmar or Bangladesh. You have to accept the fact that populations have a lot of uh, brethren on both sides, and you have to deal with them in a manner that you convince them that they should be happier with the idea of India, uh, rather than trying to push them over the edge. Uh, so that they start another insurgency. Absolutely. So between, you know, let's let's kind of step out of Myanmar, uh, the battle of influence between India and China over there, uh, the Chinese wanting to build that, uh, you know, China-Myanmar economic corridor, that particular road that goes through the jungle right down to, uh, you know, uh, the port. And of course, there is a, you know, uh, Kaikfu is a, is a port which they're trying to do. And of course, India is, of course, trying to, you know, uh, hedge its bets against this particular thing. How do you think the battle of influence plays out within the Myanmar's mind uh, between India and China, sir? We are trying, as you know, to build a multimodal project in Sitwe. Yes, in sir. the port of Sitwe. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese are doing it somewhere else because they need access to the sea from Myanmar. Myanmar. The access which they don't have. Right. We need the markets of the northeast, of the southeast. And we need to use the territory of uh, Myanmar through which we need to traverse to Thailand, Siam, Cambodia. The and hmm. Vietnam. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need to have a trade route hmm. between them. And we need a friendly border. When you talk of influence, Adi, you're talking of influence of whom? The government in power, uh, the people. So there is no ordinary Myanmaris. You will always have tribes there. In tribal culture, mm -hmm. it is first the tribe. Always. So whose influence mm -hmm. will you try and deal with? Uh, when when you see when you come to uh, the southern part of Arunachal, you have the Naga tribes, you have the Somra tract, you have the Naga tribes, the Kukis. Uh, you, then you have Tamu and uh, More, which is a which is a marketplace. And then as you go down, you have the homeland of the Konyaks. And as you go further down, you have the homeland of the Chins. So these are the tribes that uh, dominant that uh, that have their own issues with us, uh, things that we have to sort out with them. Right? 
I am certain that China can't sort that out with them either. <laughs> At least we understand the so, tribes, so they don't. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so they can't sort that out with them. Will they help China in any kind of access to India? It is largely doubtful because their first experience with Japan during World War II wasn't a good experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is. I feel they will oppose any kind of movement from of China through the Somra tracks so or through Myanmar to the Somra tracks and then enter uh, us from the northeast. Similarly, the story in in Napido and Rangoon, uh, whether whether Myanmar will ever give access to their country because they too are very very uh, are the very careful. After all, if you remember, they too were colonized by the British. Uh, their uh, their constitution uh, has clearly laid out that there is no question that they will allow anybody to come in. And the Myanmar army will, will not just fall into the hands of the Chinese. So China is also playing it very carefully. They are they have limited their uh, their, their aims to an access to a, uh, a seaport uh, because Myanmar is uh, has as you know uh, is has a lot of these accesses. It's China is also trying to reach the Southeast Asia from there, uh, but it's never going to be easy. Hmm. And there's never going to be one single mind, never going to be one single uh, leader. Who will be able to command the respect like Nevin did uh, post uh, their independence from the British? Wonderful, sir. So, uh, the factor where we talk about basically a you know diplomatic outreach or a Indian outreach, let me not say diplomatic. Mm. We had two visits by the foreign secretary since the time the coup. Yeah. Coup, junta takeover, the current dispensation. Again, the way you look at it has mm. taken over in Myanmar. How do you see the the overt interactions as per se? Let's just put it at that. And then, of course, I will come to you with a larger question about this interaction. But request you to kind of tell us your reading of the uh, overt interactions that are taking place with the Myanmarese. Sir. Okay, so let me just start with the military interactions. Uh, we have a system by which we engage the Myanmar army at the post level, that means at the major company commander level. We have an interaction that we engage the Myanmar army at the battalion level, that is a full colonel level. Uh, so the post commanders can talk to each other, uh, report any any kind of problem immediately. Uh, so can the sector commanders, the brigadiers can do that too. And we have the sector commanders meeting either in, in uh, in Imphal mm -hmm. or in one of the places in, in Myanmar along the border. Plus, we have the Myanmar army interaction with our army. Plus, we have a national level meeting. Uh, plus, of course, they have an embassy in India and we have an embassy in, in Rangoon. Our embassy has not shifted to Napido. Yeah. Okay. So when you're talking of interactions, we have enough interactions. We have enough uh, meetings. We have covert and overt meetings. Uh, a lot of meetings you will not know about. Some meetings are talked about. Some are not talked about. But the end point is that uh, we are trying our best to disengage from the process of being, uh, uh, how would I say, protectors of democracy in Myanmar to having a clear idea that you have to engage the government in power. Absolutely. In mm, mm, so we are mm. engaging the government in power, Adi. And we are quite clear that that's what matters to us. And we have to make sure that our borders, northeastern borders remain, uh, remain uh, largely peaceful, which we've been able to achieve over the last couple of years. So that's the situation right now. Uh, uh, interaction wise, there is no dearth of interactions, not that we're not meeting. Uh, we are meeting them quite, quite frequently. Hmm. And we do bring bring out any points that we want to, and they bring out any points that they want. 
it could be as mundane as our assam rifles crossing over the border uh, because some villages share the same same border so uh, there have been a lot of times when they have complained about our assam rifles going inside and breaking the sawmill which they felt was in their area but our assam rifles felt it was in our area so these kind of things in border countries is always there yeah yeah but we're best trying our best to tell them and they are also tell us that look we understand that there'll be problems along the border but let us not make this the situation that the countries go at war with each other or the countries diplomatic status gets issue we have to be clear that uh, most of them are buddhist so they have a lot of regard for us because uh, they want to come to gaya and visit yeah. both gaya uh, it's a very major pilgrimage point for them and uh, i found that uh, we have offered uh, this visit of both gaya to them and it's it's okay adi we are two neighboring country we are not at war the border is peaceful border may be active but it is peaceful <laughs> that's an interesting perspective active but peaceful okay but sir, a follow up on this uh, interaction because the junta wears the uniform itself and you've been in that area you served for a long time in that area you know i mean you're an honorary uh, you know you you're known as a honorary northeast citizen as a matter of fact and i've i've seen you being facilitated by a lot of the tribes there and stuff like that uh i forget the name of the tribes so pardon my ignorance but i think uh, you'll be able to shed some more light on it but doesn't the myanmar junta actually prefer dealing with somebody in uniform from india because you know there's there's always that trust that that is there and this is something that of course has not been said openly but most of the interactions we've seen have been with people with uniform sir so is it that they trust the uniform a little more i i think adi it's the government of india that we represent whom they trust uh the government of india does not uh, like the uniform uh fraternity to deal with political issues or administrative issues we deal with military to military issues between ourselves that is if their military has a problem our military has a problem we have access to each other we have their telephone numbers we can call them we have laid down lines but as far as dealing with them diplomatically it is our civilian uh, diplomat in uh, rangoon who goes across to napido Our, our our ambassador, uh, and he is the one who deals with them. Like the present deputy NSA Vikram Mishri, he was in Napido as the as the ambassador. The fine job there. So he's uh, they 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 are engaging the civilian government. They are engaging their uh, the the military government in Napido. I think they're doing an okay job. Uh, the idea of trust of being in uniform or not. uh well we are we are as a country fairly uh uncomfortable if our military officers started discussing political issues with them so we the military is discouraged from accepting these these issues and we were okay with that abhi as long as we can deal with the military to military problems we don't mind the other issues with that interesting sir So thanks so much for this. I have a couple of questions that I want to take up with you from the audience that is watching us. Uh, they, they, uh, you know, Myanmar is something which is not spoken about. I try and cover it in a monthly talk that I do with regards to a neighborhood watch, where we talk about what's the big news which is happening there, how does it affect India, and generally speaking, what's happening around the place. But you know, the neighbor of India is always on fire, so that's something which is which is uh, to be considered. a uh, first question comes from greeting general i read somewhere manipur rebels which are involved in drugs in myanmar are facing i mean he is put in a addendum in uh, the next message so i'm adding involvement in drugs in myanmar are facing a revolt from the local population which are leading to the junta this is a difficult question to answer because you know uh, the junta is dealing at a different level like i said they have outsourced their border areas to various insurgent groups now whether these in insurgent groups uh, deal with drugs whether they deal with uh, 
uh, with smuggling of arms or wildlife or, or uh, trafficking of people, whatever be the story, they eventually because Myanmar army, the Tatmadaw Tat cannot control uh, and they have only four units there. Mm. They cannot control that area. They have outsourced it to, to the local insurgent populations. So if there is a local revolt, it will be with the local uh, insurgent group. Every once in a while, you have a blast in Tamu or uh, More, yeah. and a couple of people are killed. Uh, but I haven't noticed any large-scale movement of this kind where any kind of... There will be... Any one of these insurgent groups can be a direct military threat to the Janta in, uh, or the Tatmadaw government in, in uh, Napido. Interesting, sir. Good uh, afternoon, sir. How do we handle the issue of illegal Rohingyas, migrants from uh, Myanmar infiltrating into India and then getting radicalized, committing crimes and being used for demographic changes and so on and so forth? So, uh, that, That's a question that... Uh, I've been asked many times at the Director General of the Assam Rifles by even the Home Minister at that time. You have to understand the location of the of the province from where the Rohingyas come from. Sir. Between the province from where the Rohingyas come from, there is the Chin province. And then comes the the the, the then comes the border. The Rohingyas crossing into Chin territory itself is a very major issue for the Rohingyas because they don't look like the Chins. And we have spoken to the Chin, Chin rebels and they are quite clear that they will not allow any, any Rohingyas to come through that particular place. So, my take is that these chain that these Rohingyas actually get across to Bangladesh and then from there take a boat to enter India from in 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 Tripura or West Bengal. It is unlikely that they're using the northeastern territory, especially along the Mizoram, Nagaland, Imphal belt. Very, very few because I remember uh, when we had started preventing these uh, Rohingyas from coming in 2017-18 when I was the director general, I don't remember catching even one person uh, throughout my tenure. We didn't oh. catch them in Mizoram, we didn't catch them in Mimphal. There was no place at which any one of these Rohingyas could say that they had entered from the northeast. But definitely they have entered from West Bengal, definitely they have entered from uh, Tripura. They would, take a, they would take a boat from Cox's Bazaar and get across, uh, you know, any one of these points from which they could just slip into India. Because we were a porous country. So that's the first issue. Committing crimes... Uh, that part of the area has a lot of crime anyway. Because mm. like I said, there are different interests. Mm. And some of these crimes may be ascribed to the Rohingyas. Uh, much that I feel is the issue about Rohingyas uh, is really not so, really, to tell you the truth. But whatever be the ability of the Rohingyas to cross into India, the Indian armed forces, the SM rifles, the, the Indian Central Armed Police Forces that, board, that guard the border, like the BSF, etc. We are very careful and have not allowed uh, any one of these Rohingyas to enter over the last three to four years. It may have had earlier, may have come in earlier when we were not so careful, but definitely in the last three to four years, I uh, five years, I would say, uh, there has been no entry from the from Nagaland, Arunachal, Mizoram, and Manipur. That's that's a, I would say, a <clears throat> satisfying thing to hear, sir. 
Yeah. Because we found some of these chaps roaming around in Jammu and one really wondered what was yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but, you know, we are a porous country, Adi. Yeah, yeah. yeah we are yeah, a porous country. There are <laughs> differences in each point of our country. Uh, and because of these differences, the local differences tend to become bigger and larger. Mm-hmm. And also, uh, our, our press, our media does not verify anything. If if we have interviewed some 55, 60 of these, uh, these, these, these Rohingyas who entered India, I think one or two of them said that they had come through Manipur, uh, through in a bus uh, to More and then from there entered there. But if you question them further, they, they had no idea of how they came in, how they were trafficked in. Because like I said, Adi, <coughs> insurgent groups are also trafficking people. Yeah. So for an X sum of money, the insurgent, the insurgent group can take him through the territory they, they, con- they control and, pull them, yeah, and push, push them. them into some part of India which they are aware is not held so, held, uh, so tightly. Somebody says, uh, influence of China and Myanmar is as limited as their influence in the Pakistani army. Your view, sir? No, oh, no. China's influence of China and the Pak army is very, very large. They, they have a lot of influence within the Pakistan army. The Myanmar army, their officers and soldiers do do courses in the Chinese army. With the PLA. But my own personal experience is that the PLA, uh, that the Myanmar, the Myanmar government, the Myanmar army is extremely careful, very, very suspicious of Chinese, uh, of, of the Chinese overtures towards them. And I don't think that they will be able to cross much. They might get an odd contract because the Chinese do things very cheaply, uh, very quickly, and the complete tasks, uh, unlike uh, the contracts given to India. So many of the contracts given to India, many of the the aid that India has said they would do, remain uncompleted hmm. because our uh, contractors and all are not able to do what the Chinese do, and as quickly. But other than that, influence-wise, I would say is extremely limited. Definitely not as much as the influence in the Pakistan army. That port is there, so what's the uh, Sivite port, if I'm not mistaken, sir? Sitwe. 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 Uh, this is supposed to be inaugurated pretty soon, or uh, I mean, last I think early in January we got a report saying that this port is ready and. Things are supposed to move in and it will benefit quite a bit into Mizoram and stuff like that. How do you kind of put that into perspective, sir? Sitka is about, say, 75 kilometers from the Mizoram southern border. Sir. Uh, there are, it's a port which needs to connect uh, with a good road. We need to connect Sitwe. We need to build a port in Sitwe. So, we have been able to do these things, but it's no use inaugurating something which is which may not take off immediately. Much of that part, the Myanmar government does not control at the moment. So, to deal and to move your stuff through Sitwe uh, would require a great deal of effort of us dealing with the various insurgent groups who control that area between Myanmar and Sitwe. Oh, between Parva and Sitwe. Between, mm-hmm. yeah, between the southern Mizoram place and Sitwe. But yes, uh, it, it's a good beginning. It's a good start. It's shown that India has intent and that we want to move into the southern part of uh, into Myanmar and we are willing to help them. We've also rebuilding the Stillwell Road, as you're aware. Yes, sir. And the Stillwell Road uh, was a road that uh, Stillwell had created to move supplies to the Chinese army when they were fighting the Japanese. Japanese it cuts through major parts of uh, of Myanmar. This road was created by General George Stillwell 
and is being remade by us. Much of this road has been made. Uh, some of the bridges and some of the culverts still remain to be made. But we are getting there, Adi. We are getting there. Nice to hear that from someone who served in that place. And I'll take a last question, sir. Uh, Turkey once rushed uh, to save the Rohingyas. How Indian Army would deal with a NATO state militarily operating in this particular area, sir? I have absolutely one absolutely clear that Turkey cannot enter Myanmar. <laughs> they, they can't enter Myanmar. There are too many countries in between. And uh, the, the Rohingyas are in, are in a bad state, living in an island of Bangladesh. The Bangladeshi's uh, army has spoken to me, the BDR has spoken to me. The Bangladesh, uh, the Bangladesh rifles, they mm. also spoke to me. Uh, they are keeping them at a, at a distance now. They don't... Uh, they don't trust the Rohingyas anymore. So Rohingyas can get through as the boat people get through all over the places. Human capabilities increase. They can make boats and push through. But Turkey to come inside is uh, it's not possible. Uh, Mr. Bhargava, I think you... Uh, and they can never be a threat to us. Sir, uh, Mr. Bhargava, I think, uh, you know, sir has already answered the India-China sort of a conundrum within Myanmar. So you can just, uh, you know, refer to that. Sir, this has been fantastic. I think we've covered a large aspect of the geography and the people. A lot of people don't realize, and something that you brought out really well, is that Myanmar is not fully in control of the junta as yeah. uh, what po is popularly understood. You know, when, when the military takes over a country, everybody thinks border to border, every inch is... Mm. It's not, not the case. So. Not the case. And uh, <clears throat> I think that's a, that's a very interesting uh, thing that you brought brought across because it, it helps us to understand how come there are so many insurgent groups, and especially on the periphery of Myanmar. Uh, there's another group, again, I'm sorry, you know, I've just started initiating myself into Myanmar, so these names are a little confusing for me. There's another group which is on the thigh side of the border where uh, it's, 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 it's being allegedly, again, supported by the thighs and, you know, the, the Southeast Asian nations and stuff like that to put some pressure on them. So there's a multiple of these groups, and I think you brought it out very interestingly that these groups... Sometimes the janta deals with them. Sometimes they fight with them. So it's a, you know, it's a messy it's affair. A, it's it's a messy affair, and much of this place they leave for them to say, okay, keep peace here. We can't come here. That's I can't right. see the the Myanmar army fighting uh, these insurgent groups. They simply don't have the capability. The paise paise they can unko jara. Absolutely, they don't need to give them money. Because these groups earn a lot of money using the resources of that place. <clears throat> Interesting. Thank you so much, sir. As always, it's a learning yes, experience. Sir. And my request to you would be the next one, which is somebody... I can't find a better person to talk uh, Nepal with her. And that's something that I want to take up with you probably in the next week or so. We will. I'll find some time with you and you know do that. Because Nepal is, to me, is a bit of a challenge with the Chinese. It's a conundrum. Speaking. It's a conundrum. Yeah, creeping in slowly and from someone, uh, you know, who better to talk about Nepal from rather than someone, a, a general from the Gorkha regiment, more than anything else, uh, you have. Yeah, your, and I've been a defense attache there. I was just about to say that. Sir. So you've got, a, you've got a lot of interest in that area and, you know, yeah. it'll be interesting to learn from you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. As always, uh, it's, it's always great interacting with you and learning from you. Till next time, sir. Jai Hind. Jai Hind.